Hey guys, David Fine here from Keys Moz. I've got a really cool video for you guys because a lot of people in the world of Lepidoptera, they raise monarchs, they raise uh, painted ladies, they raise silk moths. Uh, you can buy the little painted lady kits, which are cool for kids. You can buy them for, you know, 15 bucks or whatever it is. And they sent, mail you a little cup with some food mushed up on the bottom and the caterpillars eat that. And it's super easy because there's no work. Uh, you know, and you get to witness metamorphosis, which is really, really cool. But today, guys, we are not raising monarchs. We are raising some tiny, tiny little butterflies. These are hair streak butterflies. Now, they're, they're not the easiest creatures to video, but I have them in this clear cup so you can at least see them. They're, these are two female angelic hair streak or fulvous hair streak butterflies from South Florida. They are, they're actually very beautiful. They've got a bright copper, orangey copper color inside, metallic color, really, really cool. And these ladies, are ready to lay me some eggs. So the, the, the purpose for the video is, how do you get a hair streak butterfly to lay eggs? And I've got some, some techniques. I've raised probably two dozen different blues and hair streak species, and I've gotten eggs from wild caught females, which is really pretty simple to do. You just have to be very, very delicate because this is a tiny butterfly and it's really easy to kill this thing. So you gotta be really careful. You gotta make sure you take care of them. We just fed them. That's a previous video where how do you feed a baby tiny, well, I keep saying the word baby. They're, they're tiny butterflies. This is actually a full grown fulvous hair streak. They don't get any bigger than that, guys. It's about an inch wingspan. They're not babies. They are full grown adults. They've already mated. They've already, and they're ready to lay eggs. They're, they're fully fed. I just fed them. And now I'm gonna put them in a container and show you some techniques on how to get eggs from a hair streak butterfly. Check the video out, but before you do, please, 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 it helps our channel out if you give us a like. Hit the like button, just take a second to do that for me. I would greatly appreciate it. And plus give me any comments on, you know, if you have any other techniques on how to raise hair streaks or other butterflies or moth species. Um, these are just things that I've done that have worked well for me. So guys, check the video out and um, let me know what you think. So let's figure out how to get eggs from a hair streak. All right, we have our little tiny fulvous hair streak females and they're just crawling around this cup aimlessly. But I just fed them and you can see the abdomen on this female full of eggs and full of fluid. So. You know, now is the time where they're digesting, but now it's time for me to get them in a container with some of their host plant and get them to lay me some eggs because that's that is the purpose for me catching these females. Now, uh, the the host plant for this butterfly actually was for a long time thought to be Brazilian pepper, and I know I believe they've been raised on Brazilian pepper, but what we've actually found is through the Keys Moths project, one of our cool discoveries was that the host plant for the native host plant for the full of this hair streak is not Brazilian pepper, which is an exotic. It is actually Jamaican dogwood. And so we, we found uh, females ovipositing on Jamaican dogwood flower stems. And that was very helpful. Now, we don't have Jamaican dogwood in Broward County very much, to my knowledge. I, I don't know anywhere where we have it. So, um, what we do have is a tree called Indian Pongam, which is a, another exotic, which, but it is used in ornamentals and right in a shopping center, right across the street from my house, there's a few big trees of Indian Pongam. And what I did was I went and cut some fresh cuttings from the Indian Pongam, and we're gonna set those up in a container. And I believe that these butterflies, once, as soon as they start touching the new leaves of the Indian pond gam, they're gonna to start to uh, go into egg laying mode. Now, one trick guys, when, if you're ever gonna get, try to get a butterfly to lay eggs, they are designed to be very, very, very picky and specific where they lay their eggs. So I'm obviously you gotta know the host plant. 
If you if you don't know what the host plant is, forget it, right? Um, second of all, not only do you have to know the host plant, but you also have to know what are the habits of the butterfly? Because this butterfly, even though the host plant is Indian pongam in this case, or Jamaican dogwood, you can't just throw any leaf in there and hope that you're gonna get eggs. Because if it's not the right conditions or the right part of the plant, they won't lay eggs. For instance, the silver banded hair streak feeds on balloon vine. They only lay eggs on the flowers and developing seeds. If you put leaves, even the new leaves of a balloon vine in a container with a female silver banded hair streak, you're not gonna get eggs. Um, another one would be like the um, satyrum hair streaks. They're a little bit more in the northern part of the state, but they actually lay eggs on the bark of the tree, like for instance, an oak tree, like or the uh, Fixicia favonius, the southern oak hair streak, their eggs actually diapause. So they don't lay eggs on oak leaves. They lay eggs on the stems. And then the oak goes through its entire summer and fall and then winter. And then just as the oak starts pushing out new growth, because all the leaves fall off during the winter, they start pushing out new leaves in the spring. And then once, the, as soon as the tree starts pushing out new leaves, they're, these butterfly eggs somehow are designed to it hatch from their egg at the same time the oak is pushing out new leaves and then they start feeding on the brand new little leaf leaves of the oak tree. Well, in this case, this is a tropical species and the tropical plant which we're using is Indian pongam. And I cut, these guys lay eggs. And when I say the new leaves, this is a new leaf, these leaves will turn green and this leaf is only a couple days old. But when I say they lay eggs on the new leaves, I'm talking about this stuff here. And that is actually all you want in your container. You want as little foliage as possible. You don't want the butterfly to be stressed or whatever. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to snip off a pretty big portion of this thing. Oh, by the way, before I do that, here's the setup that I have. I have the 16 ounce cup and I've got a four ounce cup. The four ounce cup's got water in it and it's got little slits that I cut with an X-Acto knife in the lid. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut these stems down to size and just stick them in here and that's how they're gonna stay fresh. And then what I'll do is we take our four ounce cup with the stems, we put it down inside the 16 ounce cup and it actually fits really nice and snug so that the butterflies can't crawl down, right? And so then these little leaves are just going to be sticking up near the top of our container. And we'll put the butterflies inside the container and we'll show you what we do from there. So what we have to do is we have to measure the stem needs to go down to the bottom of the water so that it makes sure that it's in the water. And the new little leaflets need to stay near the top of the container. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this right around here. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Put this, make sure that the stem is down near the bottom. And now when we put our lid over it like this, we're gonna put this lid on top. The leaves, the new leaves are at the top, the very top, because that is where the butterflies are gonna crawl. Remember butterflies crawl instinctively up and then they'll crawl up and they'll be around the lid and then they're gonna crawl. And then once their feet touch these little new little nodes here, this little meristems, that's when they start laying eggs. So I'm gonna cut a couple of these. Okay. And I'm gonna stick these in here. Down to the bottom.
And then setting this up right, guys, is super, super important. Because if it's not set up right, then your butterflies just wander around and they die. And then, they, then you don't get any eggs. All right, so now what we do is we gotta set up our container. What I have now is a paper towel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of this paper towel and I'm going to cover the lid with the paper towel. And that is gonna be what we do. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna rubber band the paper towel down over the top. And then what we'll do is we'll place our lid on top. And I'll explain why we do all this later. But first thing we gotta do is we've gotta figure out how to get our butterflies in this cup without harming them. And that is actually gonna be the most difficult part of our day. All right guys, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try something. I'm trying to film this. I've got a pair of tweezers. And I'm gonna try and grab the butterflies. Easier said than done. Okay. You gotta know how to do this, guys. You grab the butterflies. Oops. Bye. Gotta do it so gently so you don't harm them. Okay, come on. You gotta grab them right on the forewing, by the forewing vein. And if you grab them like that, you have to keep them from being able to open their wings. All right, so now I'm gonna slip this lady right down into the cup, down the bottom. I'll put the I'll put this on top like this, just so that she stays put. Now I gotta get the other lady. All right, I don't know if this is gonna work, I'm gonna try it. Got her, okay. Got her by the forewing, and I'm just gonna get her in here real quick. Oh, I let her go. Oh no. There she goes, back to the window. All right, let's see. Right by the forewing, got her. By the by, the inner forewings. Sorry guys, this is not the way you should be doing this. Okay, she's, she's in, now they're both in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this rubber band and bring it and put it down around the paper towel. And the reason we do that is because there's gonna be time where we want to feed our butterflies. And what we'll do is we'll just make a little incision here and we'll put some sugar water on a Q-tip and we'll just put it inside of here. And that's how we'll feed our butterflies. But the trick it now is if you're gonna keep your butterflies inside, you gotta keep ants from eating them. That's one problem. See, the, see they're already in there. Our hair streak butterflies are now crawling around a cup that's got just about perfect conditions for their survival and for them to lay eggs. So as you can see, that female is already touching the host plant with her feet, which their taste buds are on their feet. And so they actually taste the plant, making sure that it's the right plant and put the eggs exactly where they want them to be. So there's plenty of room in here. You don't want a whole lot of leaves. So that's why I took a lot of these bigger leaves, just took them right off because you don't want them in there. They serve no purpose whatsoever. Uh, all they do is get in the way and it makes things, the, the butterfly has no room to move around. So you, this little tiny 16 ounce cup is actually plenty of room for two butterflies to crawl around and be very, actually very happy. So we'll feed them twice a day I'll make a little incision on the top here with uh, an X-Acto knife and put my Q-tip with sugar water inside and the butterflies will eat very happily like that. Um, but now, if you're gonna keep them inside, guys, one of the biggest enemies of this butterfly is going to be desiccation because there's air conditioning in here. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna cover the container most of the time with a lid like this, because that'll keep most of the humidity 
inside. Now there's gonna there's a lot of humidity inside this cup. The the leaves are sucking up water and they're letting go water there. Uh, plus there's there's evaporation taking place. So there is plenty of humidity. Um, but if you just leave it up to this paper towel, that humidity will quickly escape and your butterflies are gonna dry out in the air conditioning. So I'll just put this vented lid, it's got little tiny holes in it, and it's kind of rested on top. That slows down the desiccation process and it keeps them nice and moist, keeps humidity in the cup. Now the last thing, or not the last thing, the next thing is you gotta make sure you keep ants from eating them. And that, that sounds like a, really, can ants get in there? Ants can get anywhere they want. That's what I've learned. So we've got to make sure we keep ants from getting at our butterflies, especially if there's sugar water inside. If you have the sugar uh, Q-tips inside, then the ants will get to it. So you got to be careful. I don't leave the sugar water inside. I just put it in twice, the, the sugar water Q-tip, twice a day for like 20 minutes. And I take it out just because I don't want ants being attracted to my butterflies because ants will eat your hair streaks very quickly. Now, finally, 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 if you want eggs from your hair streaks, they need sunlight. And I'm not talking, you know, uh, just like, like artificial lights like these. I'm talking sunlight. So what I'll do is I'll leave them on a windowsill. And as the sun hits this cup, it's cloudy a little bit right now, but as the sun hits this cup, butterflies are literally solar powered. When the sun, they're ignited by sun. So when the sun hits the cup, it's gonna warm the cup. They are going to be energized and be ready to lay eggs. So right now guys, this cup is perfectly set up for the best case scenario for a butterfly to lay eggs, or at least a little hair streak. And so now it's a waiting game. Sometimes it takes minutes and they go right to it. In fact, who knows? She may have already laid some eggs. I don't know. Um, I typically will just feed them for a couple days. And then in a couple days, I'll open up my cup and then I'll see what's going on. And if they've laid enough eggs, I'll let the butterflies go and just raise out my butterflies. Uh, but if not, sometimes I'll change up the the, the cup, I'll change, I'll put them in a bigger cup or a bigger container or try more direct sunlight or indirect sunlight. You try different things and you kind of trial and error basis and eventually you get a good formula. This guys has been the formula that I have used many, many, many times and I've gotten eggs very easily from hair streaks, blues, skippers and other smaller butterflies. So. All right, guys, hope you liked that video. We are going to take our hair streaks now and get some eggs, and we will hopefully show you the full life cycle of the fulvous hair streak, but we got to get the eggs first. So sometimes it takes a couple days, uh, but guys, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And check out our website. It's keysmoths.com. We've got all 600 moth species from the Florida Keys photographed there for you, plus 100 butterfly species. So um, there's tons of information there. If you're interested in uh, the butterflies and moths of South Florida, you must check out our website because a lot went into it. There's a lot of data there and a lot of photographs. So uh, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get out there and find some bugs. And if you're into it, let's breed some hair streak butterflies. Take care now.